All right, wait for it to come up. Come on, Twitch, respond. There we go. Not Twitch responded. About time. Took it hours. Anyways, as always, gotta do my stupid gimmick. God, this gimmick is so stupid. I'm gonna cover my face. Twitter. Facebook. Dun dun dun. It's great, let's post it to Reddit. supposed to do a pre-stream on Twitch. Are you supposed to sit there and... I don't really know what you're supposed to do. So, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just start or continue. There we go. Three minutes later, we're back at the barracks. Power is back on, and Unji gets right to work finishing the kimchi. Chong has turned on the radio. Thank you for tuning in to One Korea, One Voice, serious today's top story. A glorious leader took a well-deserved day off today by playing a round of golf at Pyongyang, old course number one. As suspected of the son of our beloved former leader, he shares his father's natural talent for golf. Glorious leader broke his father's record with a 40 under par 32 for the round. <laughs> Holy shit. Included in this round was a streak of nine hole in ones, a feat only he has ever done in the world. Guess Glory Leader missed his true calling of dominating the world of World Tour professional golfers. Dinner is ready! I love playing golf, but I suck at it. Terrible. Jong turns off the radio as we both walk over to the dining table. Dinner does look good. Unji has made a traditional kimchi along with a kung bao. Chandlers would call it beans and rice. Wow, this looks delicious, Unji. She blushes a little at my praise. It's really kind of cute. Well then, what? E yeah, I can't pronounce that. Wait, what was that? You know, eat to die, whatever. The thing you say for every meal. Something about, I take this food, thank for making it, right? Idiot. Baka. You're mixing your Asian countries. That's Japanese. Green would be Jomugi. Yeah, I can't pronounce that either. I'm an American. We can't pronounce anything but third grade English. And honestly, we don't do that very often because we don't have any food. It's annoying hearing that before every meal. And at least try, at least say it once. I'd rather not pick up that habit. Just say thanks and eat. Ah, well, thanks, Unji. The rest of the meal is eaten in silence, but the food is pretty good. Unji can definitely cook. Afterwards, help clear the table and wash the dishes. The girls protested a little, but seemed grateful in the end. It's getting late, though. I think it's time to turn in for the night. Tomorrow we'll present you with some places to go. And one of us will escort you there. Just one of you? Why not both? Three is a crowd. Plus, one of us has to clean up around here some and maybe go to the store to pick up a sleeping mat. Sorry again about the bedroom. I'll try to get some rest, but I'm pretty excited for tomorrow. Yes, I am as well, but we do need rest. Good night, Jean. Good night, Unji. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. At least don't dream of being taken to the gulag. They both leave the room, but Unji pops right back in quickly. Oh yeah, it's Thursday. We have artillery drills tonight. Don't let it scare you. She snickers. Oh yeah, I'll be... Wait, what? So when we leave Dreamo... Her English really is terrible. Almost as bad as mine. <laughs> terrible. Ah, good morning, Drilling and Sorata! I don't remember setting an alarm last night. But I needed a reminder that I'm in Korea. After rubbing my eyes for a few minutes, I took a look around. The sun isn't invisible yet, just a pre dawn glow creeping over the horizon. Looks like the alarm is blamed for my cell phone sitting on my nightstand. Looks like something out of the 80s. I flip it open. 
It's set to 5.30. 5 goddamn 30! Who sets an alarm this early? Oh good, you are awake and I see you found your new phone. For someone as curvy as Zhang, she sure can be stinky when moving. Erm, yes. I sure did. Hang on, everyone on base could hear this thing go off. It's the latest model of innovative technology. Even citizens of Korea aren't able to get such a phone yet. Consider welcoming gift from our government to you. What the? Oh yeah, that's because it's not Korea. She gives a bright smile to me as she says this. But thanks. Unji is making breakfast, so please clean up and come out soon. As she exits the room, I finally take a good look at my... <coughs> new phone. It's a Motorola Dynetic model. What in the... This phone would have been new about 30 years ago. Here's the cellular technology of this thing is ancient. I mean, fossilized dinosaur shit ancient. This sucks, I just bought my phone only a month ago. I wonder where it is. Some North Korean official is probably swapping through all my stuff as we speak. Ooh, what you got on there? Elsewhere. I'm telling you, this is the newest model. Sleek, black casing, and the 64 gig memory model. Nice. Look at how many gigs of RAM it has. The thing goes through a full battery charge in like two hours. And you drop the thing half a meter onto a pillow and the screen shatters. At least I can stream movies. I like... Like I don't want to see another rerun of 101 War Memorials to see in Pyongyang. Fair enough, into the tri- Oh, no! Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I probably sound like that. Well, at least this one can take pictures. Low quality, low versions of pictures that can be enlarged into decent prints. wonder what contacts are on here and if I can add my own. Only if two contacts. Xiong and Unji. Here, gonna my cousin to the list for quick texting. How do you even go about password protecting the contacts? You don't, it's on Korea. <laughs> Terrible. I can't even add anyone to the phone! Frustrated, I head towards the bathroom. Well, at least this is something they're up to date with in North Korea. Pretty ordinary, ordinary sink, ordinary shower, and a really, really ordinary toilet. I mean, there's nothing special about this toilet at all. White porcelain flush handle looks like another three and a half gallon per flush model. Completely an aspect not suspicious, sorry. No fancy buttons to push or anything that might attack me like a dream dredger water gun. Seriously, I cannot express how plain and ordinary this toilet is. Jeez, this place is getting to me. I'm pondering the essential properties of a goddamn of trains here. I guess I'll take a quick shower. With cold water, I'm sure. A few minutes later... At the shower, I hear voices come from the kitchen. Are you going to come out for breakfast anytime soon? Or are you going... Or are you going... What the? Did it? What's going on? Uh oh. Are you kidding me? Oh, is there any way to go back? The thing skipped on me. Oh, or are you gonna waste this month's entire water ration? Hey, now we're back. That was weird. I don't think I took any longer in the restroom than normal. Yeah, you took two minutes staring at the toilet alone. What is going on with- Dang it, game, why are you screwing up? Why do you gotta screw up on me? Let's see... Da -da -da. Check on this... What is going on with this game? Um, what the hell is going on? I guess it's okay now. What, do you have cameras in the bathroom? Come on. Of course not, don't be ridiculous. Now get over here so we can all have breakfast. They totally have cameras in there. I'll be right there. After yesterday's debacle with my Tokyo hotel shirt, I decided to stick to plain clothing. A pair of tan cargo pants and a blue t-shirt should be fine, right? Down my clothing, I head over to the table for breakfast. Good morning, I hope you rested well. As well as can be expected for the first night at a new place. I'm used to it though, so it's all good. So glad to hear it. Your seat is at that end. If you'd be so kind, we can serve you. Thanks, I'm looking forward to it. The two girls will be sitting on the other side of me. Either side of me. Unji brings out a plate of cold noodles, rice guru, and what appears to be some beef and a sauce. Let's have one seat and begin eating. I never had cold noodles for breakfast before. It's okay. Don't want to compare to cold pizza, but still, not bad. 
I'm so glad you're able to compare my homemade, my handmade meal with leftover American takeout. I mean, like that. I'd take handmade meals over takeout any day. Yes, Unji. I don't think he meant anything mean by it. Hmm. <clears throat> Whatever. Stupid American. We finish eating. I help clean up the dishes despite the protests. Your bad letting you clean up after breakfast alone. You're our guest. You should be relaxing. It's okay, really. I'm used to KP duty. Remember this one time. Oh man, Gunny was so pissed he had me cutting potatoes all night. After like hour four, I was so in the zone. But I got almost peered at a grenade that fell in the box. Besides, the quicker you both get done, the quicker we get out and explore. Do you really want to explore? Really? Are all Westerners so forgetful? We told you yesterday that only one of us could go with you each day. One of us will stay behind in case the glorious leader calls and needs us. Right, right. Sorry, I'd forgotten. We have a list of potential places you're allowed to visit here. Each day you can pick an area and one of us will come in you there. I know who gets to go. I don't have to pick between the two of you, do I? But seriously, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings here. You don't have to worry about a thing. We each have our own areas that we know more about than the other. Whichever you select, the one most suited for taking you there will go with you. I guess that makes sense. Great, can we quit with the tutorial now and pick a date place already? Did you just say date place? Is that not correct? Um, yeah. Let me take a look at the map. Certainly, here you go. Zhong hands me a piece of paper, it's in pretty rough shape. Oh, let's see. Best Korea! <laughs> I didn't realize I had to fill out a ditto sheet while on vacation. What are you blabbing on about now? I'm commenting on this pitiful excuse for a map you've given me. It's like something in elementary school with no funding for a decent photocopy would print. Have you know that map was printed by a prestigious brigade of Korean cartographers? Using the finest machines and printing technology. If you say so. Shut up and pick a date location already! Yes, ma'am. Ooh, where to go to? Where to go? You shall not pass. Bikini spring here. We will obliterate you, evil occupied Korea. Evil this way. No go to Nippon. To buy cabbage salt bullets race. That's scratched on. China, native evil. And yeah, let's go to one song. Okay, one second. There we go, back. So going over the map, a coastal area in the east side of the peninsula has been circled in red ink. Also, in the cold, it looks like someone had bikini sprites here. <laughs> Unseen hand of fate begging me along. Looks like this may be a bit of a haul, but Wonsan looks like it'd be a cool place to go. There's usually lots to do at the beach, right? I swear if I find out who wrote that comment about bikini in the code, <laughs> he's going to be in a gulag for a month. I'm not taking you there, just forget it and pick somewhere else. Oh, and here I was hoping to get to split watermelons with while Zhang had me help her with the sunscreen. What? Think take me along then, Zhang? Of course, it would be my pleasure. Well then it's settled. I'll go grass on the wear on the beach and we'll get the driver over. Huh? Oh no, you don't. Nothing is settled. Hear me now, you get your scrunny butt back here. And you, sister, don't you even think about trying to edge in on my date. Y you Wanted to go with me alone, right, James? Now since it's not fair, James wants to... Don't place the blame on me. You're the one who flipped out when I suggested going to Wonsan, Unji. You're goosing the question! What? That's it. We're going. Get your bathing suit and meet me at the car. But you just said you wouldn't go there. I changed my mind. As the Americans say, Nutta up or uh, shut up, right? Okay, I know for a fact that I had teach her that. Unji... Wait a minute, he said it earlier, though. Unji starts to head back to her room when Zhang calls out. Don't forget your bikini. I'm not wearing one. He can swim if he wants to. I'll wait on the beach. Well, it really won't be that much fun of a date if I'm the only one swimming. Go ahead, just wear some shorts or one piece if you're nervous. You should. Hey, you should still swim though. That won't do. The code clearly calls for bikinis, right? Glorious leader has written this into the code himself, so she must wear a bikini. Are you kidding me? This is hilarious. Terrible. Fine, it can't be held that the glorious leader has started me to wear one. Good. You need some sun anyway, sister. 
Well, I'm gonna go grab my stuff so you can head out. I'll pack some snacks for the ride. Unji needs to get ready too. Might take her a few minutes to dig out her bikini from the mess she calls her room. Zhong laughs as she leaves the room. Hey, I pick up all my things once a month whenever I need to or not. How in the world does your room get so messy when this country barely allows any consumer goods over the border? Our clients have access to bountiful supplies of matter. You and I both know that's true. What happened to everyone is equal? Everyone here is equal. Some are just more equal than others. All animals are equal, just some more equal than others. Animal farm. Anyway, it's a fairly lengthy drive to Wonsan, so we need to hurry. Don't forget your bikini! Terrible. She's probably still in over that one. That's so adorable when she's annoyed. Guess I'd best go get my swimming trunks and get moving. Forget the fact that my new phone was confiscated. There's no way I'd be able to get anything better than some 1970s KGB spy photo level pictures of this dinosaur of a phone. I'm so surprised it even takes killer photos. Well, nothing to do now. Off I go. Why must you take so long getting ready? I was gone all of five minutes. How is that taking a long time? Do you know what could happen in those extra two minutes you took staring at yourself in the mirror? I sound a lot of things could happen, but I'm not sure why that matters. It matters because we could have already been in the car and gone two minutes ago. True. But we could also have been in the car these past two minutes you took lecture me on supposedly taking too long to get ready. There's that annoying attention defects again. Let's just get going already. Stupid American. If I can reply, Uji has already grabbed my hand and has dragged me out the front door. And just like that, we're already in the car and on the road. I can't tell if you drag me by the hand because you love me or hate me. Oh please, I heard your heart beat faster than the instant I grabbed it. Probably true, but hey, that's besides the point, right? Terrible. But quit complaining like you don't enjoy it. Who said I was complaining? When she gets close up to my face while she frowns. You sure sounded like you were complaining with that nonsense question. Uh oh. Hello. And perfectly out profession, her lips smack on mine. Um, actually, you, you, you did that on purpose, didn't you? No, it, it, it's. That impromptu make out session was all due to the terrible conditions of your country's roads. Yeah, that. Luckily, excuse, you just wanted to steal my first kiss, didn't you? I didn't even know that would be your first kiss. Well, uh, you used some of your mystical protagonist <laughs> powers, didn't you? Ah, is this Doki Doki? She's self aware. Well, I'll say they're aware because they've been talking about the coding. What the hell are you rambling on about? I don't even know anymore. All I know is you stole my first kiss. How will you make it up to me? Make it up to you? Are you serious? You were the one who fell into me. So I guess you could say this was your fault. Well, it, it doesn't count. You hear me? I'll deny it if anyone asks. Sure, but deep down, he only knows you liked it. I'm going to get her hoping to make Unji stew and anger a little bit more. I'm going to kill you and feed you to the Kamuino. Mio? What's a Kamiyo? Mio is a sinister fox that can turn into a beautiful woman and eats the hearts of men, especially protagonists. It's a beautiful woman who kills men. Guess she has some competition. Hey, just shut up and scoot over some. I want to take a nap. It's going to be a long ride. Say please. But please. Well, since said please, huh? Get some rest. Shh. Shh. Let's scoot over to the side of the sea with Frank standing. Unji already has her head plopped in my lap. Oh, hey, James, I have you left for a pillow. Oh, no, of course. Go right ahead. Thanks for asking. Oh, hush, already. You stole my first kiss for me. You owe me this much. Right now, are you sure this is enough? It's fine. Pat her head softly and she smiles. Do you like that? I... I don't hate it or anything. After a few minutes, Unji dozes off on my lap. What am I going to do with you, Unji? You're still going to hear and I feel my own eyes getting heavy as the car rolls softly along. Surprisingly well-paid road. Wakey, wakey, sleepy pants, when one saw, time to go on our date. He's pretty happy. That's unusual. Great, what should we do first? It's pretty hot out. Oh. How about we go to the beach first? Just realized that the green screen's kind of messing up. Let's see if we can't turn these on, get the better green screen going on. And not really. Still looks like shit. Oh well. But how about we go to the beach first? We can see the rest of the town after. Maybe visit a shrine or look at some shops. Sounds like a plan. Let's hit the beach. Unji giggles. Wait, giggles? Is that right? That totally doesn't match your personality. I need to... Ooh, I have a new item in my inventory. I need to have a serious talk with whomever is in charge here. Are you coming with me or are you planning on staying in the car the whole time? 
Is that on some ham fish at beach episode? No way. <laughs> uh, these are the guys that did the parents and model game, and this is hilarious. Oh, let's get changed then. Understood. Lead the way. I don't even need to offer up my hand as she decided to grab it and just take me over to a small hut just off the shoreline. Maybe calling it a hut is a bit much. It's more like an outhouse. Worse, there's only one, so we're going in one at a time. Damn. There we go. Wait, why are we both standing outside of it? Well, are you? what are you waiting for? I was waiting on you, ladies first and all that. Would you Would you mind going first? Wait a minute, after all that bravado about the glorious leader and dragging me to the beach, you're scared to go in first? Look, I'm nervous, okay? I, I've never worn a bikini in front of a man before. I've only worn it in front of Zhong. I don't like wearing it in front of her either. I can understand maybe being shy around a guy, but why your own sister? Because she always gets all the attention. I think someone may be a little jealous. Worse than that, she always tells me that they haven't grown at all. You're trying to tell her that there's more to a woman than breast size, but she just laughs. The guy is always staring at her. Sometimes I wish they'd stare at me. Not that I'd like that or anything. This might be the first time I've ever heard a woman say they wish guys would stare at her. Usually most women wish guys would stop staring. This would be uncomfortable, but it also does sort of validate you in a way. Speaking of uncomfortable, this suddenly, sudden honesty from Unji has me uncomfortable. Okay, I'll go first and get changed. Thank you. I, I, I am grateful for your understanding. Think nothing of it, it won't be long. I go inside the outhouse, first thing I notice that it's freaking dark inside. You think I wouldn't be surprised at this? This is considering the lack of updated infrastructure I've seen in Pyongyang, the rest of the country. Yet yeah, here I am creating a mon monologue at how annoyed I am at the lack of electricity. Why didn't the village put a sky window in or something? Or someone could have requested an outhouse seen with a candle or a torch and tent. <laughs> so a few minutes later I'm in my sulkies and ready to hit the beach. Now do I play it cool for Miss Sunder? Or do I heat things up by giving the gunshot an exit? Well, a minimalist approach sometimes leaves the greatest of his impact, or so I've been told. I'm so skeptical about that. Since it was just some bullshit a congressman told us when it came to cutting Marine Corps funds, though. Oh yeah, you taxpayers complain every time the Corps gets a new uniform, but did you know that we, the grunts, actually had to buy them with our own money? Yeah, ain't that bullshit. Anyway, no need to show off like those Navy flyboys. You okay in there? You didn't fall in, did you? Dasa barely fits a half-starred Korean worker. I don't think there'd be enough room for me to sit down, let alone fall. Well, come on out already so I can get changed. I guess that's my cue. I push the door open slowly and step out. I, I guess you're acceptable for an American. Well, that sounds like a very bland reception. Oh, wait, where is it? There it is. Just take the compliment. Yes, ma'am. Your face betrays you. I have no idea what you're saying at all. Sorry, idiom. Remind me again why I put up with you. Deep down, you know I'm cute. Better be careful if your ego inflates too much. You won't be able to get back into the outhouse to change. Yeah, and if it inflates past that, I might just float away across the border to Separatist Korea. Keep babbling, you just might. I'm going to change now. Try not to miss me too much. I'll try, but your bubbly presence is like a big into a light in the night. Specifically, a flashlight from another Marine going, Firewatch time, bitch! That was awful, and yet I've heard worse pickup lines. So with that, she walks into the outhouse and slams the door behind her. Pretty sure she's mumbling something about the stupid American outside as she changes. For someone who complained about me taking so long to get ready, Unji hasn't exactly been the model of speed changing herself. It's been 10 minutes, and I'm pretty sure she hasn't made a peep. Yeah, and I'm no one taking too long. You okay in there, Unji? It's been 10 minutes. I'm fine, just take my time, okay? Taking your time, have you changed your swimsuit yet? We? Oui. Are you coming down with a sudden case of shyness? I already told you, I've never worn a swimsuit in front of a man before. So I'm a little nervous, okay? What up if I close my eyes before you walk out? A little. Okay, I have my eyes closed. Come on, tell me to open them when you're ready. What if I'm never ready? Then you'll have to leave me around Pyongyang, describing everything around in the text box like some sort of low-budget visual novel. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm coming out. The door opens slowly and her muffled footsteps coming up from the outhouse. I think, I think I'm okay. You can open them now. Meow, chicka, meow, meow. Do, do I look okay? Okay, she's out on a willy pea shell going off in a crowded market square. Unji looks fantastic though. 
I mean, she's not as filled out as a sister, but there's little something for everyone in this game, you know? <laughs> I'm getting changed. Whoa, hold up, Unji. Don't mistake my sons for disapproval. I was monologuing. I don't understand. Unji, you look great. You have nothing to worry about. To be honest, I guarantee you the guy staring at you, you just can't see him. Again, I don't understand. Could you just speak plainly? Sorry, I just seen you don't have anything to worry about. Thank you. I feel a lot better. I was worried I wasn't attractive. You are, though maybe you need to line up on the Sundari routine. Well, let's hit the beach. Don't hit the beach. Didn't do anything to you to be decided to be beaten. We head over to the beach. I must admit the ocean is exceptionally clean and blue here. What well, stays that way? They could probably actually make money off tourism with this ocean. Well, if they ever get the whole build nukes and piss off the entire world thing. I spread out the towel and put up the umbrella. Let's stand at us we're forgetting something. Hey, Uji. Did you bring any sunblock? No, I'm afraid we didn't have any. Do we need it? Sunburns are no joking matter. Do you want to know how much of a tan I got after nine months of playing and baking in the Afghan sun? You're worried they may have some at the store over there. I'll lead the way. They might freak out if I go alone. I'm not... If I'm not shot up first. Well, I can't have you shot after being so nice to me about my swimsuit. Again, my hand is grabbed and led to the store. Well, what's being passed as a store. Pretty sure the store is state run. It's small, sparse, and the cashier is wearing an army, army uniform. Oh, and he has a rifle slung over his shoulder because, you know, what if you had to engage in baiting naval infantry in between shifts? I suppose that's one way to discourage shoplifting. The ship was set up simply to service foreign tourists, but we can't be too careful to foreigners, so it needs protection. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you all didn't confiscate t shirts. You deemed as anti-Korean propaganda, you wouldn't need to stay around shots like this. I'm not having another discussion about us taking your t-shirts. Though I have to admit, if you wanted to get foreigners spending money in your shops, just getting half their stuff on the way in is the way to do it. I'm going to let that one slide, but only because you complimented my swimsuit. Let's just find some black and go. It's not like this store, which means the selection leaves a lot to be desired, just like everything else in this country. There's only one bottle of sunblock and it appears to be passive sub by day and it's only SPF 2. Point, wait, what? 2.5? I've never even heard of that. Well, beggars can't be choosers, literally. There's no choice here. I pick it up and pay the nice, heavily earned cashier and we're on our way back. This morning, this bottle won't survive the day. We're going to have to reply this early and often. How early and often do you think? Say, hey, by the time we're done applying the first coat, it'll be past time for the new coat. Whatever, I'm going to lay down and relax. Would you like me to place some black on your back? Is this some sort of excuse to get your hands on me? Typically would, but now I'm just looking out for you. I suppose afterwards you want me to rub it on you? Well, yeah, I don't want to sunburn either. Hmm. <clears throat> Wish I'd have gone indoor skiing. Maybe next trip. You'd be lucky you can get another date. Well, she turns around and lets me apply the sun black to her back. In turn, she does the same to me. Afterwards, we finish slathering up and lay down under the umbrella on our towels. Is it okay if we nap for a bit, then take a quick dip in the ocean? That sounds like fun, sure. With that, she smiles and closes her eyes. Guess I'll do the same. Shh, shh, shh. James Coon! James Coon! You are in danger! This is some sort of dream? Pretty much. Did I get down with his voice thing right? <coughs> it was okay, I've heard scarier. Oh my god, it's Gunny! From Panzer Models! Is this better, maggot? What the hell are you doing here? Do not give me that shit, maggot! You're in danger, you little dick f nugget! God damn it, gonna get out of my dreams! <laughs> oh, this game's hilarious. Well, that was completely weird and unnecessary. You okay over there, Unji? Looking at her, I notice Unji isn't there. Only do I notice the splashing in the ocean. It's like Unji is having some fun swimming. Well, I guess she does know how to have fun. Glance my way, notice I'm awake and waves over to me. So I head into the water. Kind of cold, but not too bad. Glad to see you're awake. I was afraid you wouldn't get a chance to go swimming. How long was I out? About an hour or so. Unfortunately, the driver came and woke me up. We have to head back soon. Glorious Leader has put the whole country on high alert. If we don't get home before a certain time, we'll have to spend the night either at a hotel or we'll have to camp out somewhere. Sounds serious. What happened? Soon there's been a national emergency yet again. It appears the Glorious Leader has run out of imported French wines, and therefore we're under alert until the next shipment comes. <laughs> that doesn't seem to warrant a martial law. Reports are incomplete, but a glorious leader wouldn't institute such a drastic action unless it was justified. <clears throat> I guess I'll bury that gift deep in my big bag at the house. Hmm? 
Nothing important. Carry on. Well, either way, let's not... Let's not let that ruin our fun. We should swim a little before changing and heading home. With that, we splash around, have a couple swimming races, and generally have a good time. Or try to, anyway. My attention at being in this country grows by the minutes. Afterwards, we get changed, and we're back in the car, heading for Pyongyang. But yeah, why would you ever go to North Korea for a vacation? People do it, and it's like, why? I've never heard, I went to North Korea and had a good time. It's always, I went to North Korea, and now I'm literally trapped there in a prison. Begging the government to come save my ass. I wish we could have stayed a little longer. That's a nice little shrine in that. There's a nice little shrine in that area. We could have made a wish. Well, there are other ways to make a wish. Dandelions, falling stars, even a digital clock. One of those things doesn't sound like the others. You have a digital clock somewhere you wait for the numbers to align to a time like 11 11 and then you make a wish. I'll give it a try sometime, but would you mind letting me use your left for a pillow again? I could use another nap. No worries. And she sleeps a lot. Then she lays her head down on my lap again, and we're heading home in the same way as we went down to the beach. I get the feeling the whole national emergency thing is just more propaganda. To make sure the Korean populace knows who really in control here. It really blows. Two people I've interacted with most seem really nice. They deserve better than being on false high alert. Looking up, I think I see the driver staring back at me in the rearview mirror. If he knows that I notice, then he absolutely doesn't care because he makes no emotion to stop staring at me. I'm not so sure what to make of it. Maybe I'm just paranoid and sleepy. I'd be paranoid too. You're in a country where sneezing too much gets you thrown in the gulag, literally. It's been about an hour since we arrived from our first state expedition in Korea. Unji insisted on cooking dinner for everyone, and Zhang is in her room, writing in her diary. I spot out on the floor, just staring at the ceiling. It's gray. Looks like the roof may have leaked on the top, as I think there's some mold damage. To be honest, I'm a bit bored. I'd heard that Korea had a thriving. No, South Korea! As a thriving nightlife scene. North Korea does not. Yeah, exactly. It's on Seoul, South Korea. Here's my friends are from the northern half of the peninsula. And Pyongyang is anything but nightlife paradise, quite the opposite. It's pretty much what amounts to a curfew law here. Instead of knocking back a few of the ladies, I'm staring at the ceiling. Sighing. I figure I'll go say hi to Zhang and go to Unji's room where I knock on the door. Hi, Zhong. How goes the writing? Not so bad. Just trying to keep track of your trip. So I can reflect on it for years to come. Sounds nice. Can I take a look at it? Of course not. A woman's journal is sacred. No man should be looking at it. Journal is pretty sophisticated name for a diary. I suppose so. I guess I just like the word better. Sounds like something an adult would keep. As opposed to a high school girl depicted as being over 18. <laughs> Seems awfully specific example, but I think I get where you're going. So how can I help you? Well, I'm going to guess we're not allowed outside at night, being, well, Korea. So I was wondering, what you and Unji do for fun during those times? We read, or listen to the radio, fix each other's hair. Yeah, I guess I could let you mess with my hair, but I doubt you want me anywhere near yours. Why not? The only hair styling expense I have is from the barracks. And by that, I mean giving Sunday night high and tight cuts before morning, Monday morning formation. So, got anything else in mind? We have a couple of board games. Most are for two-player, though. But I think we do have one our parents had when we were growing up. We could all play it together. That's a while since we played a board game. Guess it could be fun. Which one is it? You don't sound too enthusiastic at the prospect. That'll be fine, unless you're really feeling a buzz cut. I'd rather not look like a boy. It's like anyone could mistake you for a boy. It's not like you're oot. Oh, uh, it appears that Unji has snuck in on us while we were talking. You better not finish that word, European pop stars. <laughs> James here wanted to play a board game. We only have one game that's made for more than two people. I know, it looks like it's time to break it up. First time in ages, I'm so excited. Oh, is it, uh, Twister? Uh, please tell me, Twister. Both two of you seem pretty high on the idea. Hey, what are we playing? You never said. I'll tell you later, let's go eat quickly so we can play. It's gonna be Twister. Unji us out to go eat dinner. Mostly late fare tonight. Steamed rice with some vegetables, along with the usual kimchi. Seems... I get kimchi with every meal. I may end up hating cabbage after this trip. We in comfortable silence, and when we're finished, I help Unji clean up while Zhong goes to fetch the game. While drying, I can hear Zhong humming from the other room as she sets up the game. I was pretty happy. It makes me smile. I got the board set up for whenever you, you're both done in there. Diz on the original leader token. You can't call Diz when we all aren't sitting in the same room. It's like calling shotgun before they even bring out all the weapons to choose from. 
That's not where calling shotguns mean at all. I don't care. I call dibs. Fine, I swear you're such a child at times. Just to emphasize Zhong's point, Unji sticks a tongue out at her. I'll go over and see what it almost looks like from the game to me. The word Trumpa. <laughs> uh, uh, property buying game based on purchasing over price hotel properties in Miami. On closer inspection, I find just how different the game really is. Stay, stay, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the game of annexation. Take over leadership of countries oppressed by capitalism and convert them to the way of the one true Korea. Well, I've seen alternative editions of Trumpopoly based on college campuses and popular movies. This has to be the most offensive rip I've ever seen. As future representatives of the one true Korea, the game is vital to learning how to liberate the world from the shackles of capitalism. Not sure I agree with that statement, but seeing as how there isn't much else on the docket, tell me how to play. The one you are there is called the Leader's Trust, in which he entrusts us to buy influence in the world. You roll and move your token, and when you land on the country, everyone purchases in their share. Purchase sovereign ground for a Korean embassy. When you own all the countries in a color block, you can start placing consulates. Once you have all four consulates in the country, you can trade them in for an ambassador. When all the countries in the color block have ambassadors, you convert them to cabals. That comes the fun part. When all the countries in the color block have cabals, you roll the Korean activation dice against the foreign government dice. Korean dice roll is higher than the foreign dice roll. You successfully lead a coup d'etat. Taking over that region, converting that block to Korean property. You get a bonus to your roll, and the more converted color block, the lower the bonus. As it's harder to get stubborn countries to turn. This is, yeah, so it is not like Monopoly at all. That's a little frightening that the point of the game is to lead coups against friendly capitalist nations. Not to mention one other factor. But tell me, what are the victory conditions? Convert all the color blocks in the war to Korean control. Seriously, I thought the original Trumpology took forever to play. Victory conditions for this game are practically unreachable without playing for hours on end. Stop whining, Yankee Doodle. The average playing time is only a mere 17 hours. Not counting bathroom and meal breaks, sorry. Make that 19 hours. We're not really gonna play for 19 hours, are we? Maybe we can play a shortened version tonight. Stop after a couple hours. Ooh, it's raining out. After all, we all need our sleep, so we'll be energized for tomorrow's date. You guys know that's not how you use the word in America. Or I thought no soldier would complain about going on dates with two girls. I say, hey, I wouldn't complain either. You're not one of those. How do you say, don't ask, don't tell, are you? First of all, no, and we did away with that policy back in 2010. Guess I just find it surprising that you want to call our outings days from the get-go. You're way too much. Now, we're we going to play or not. You guys, what I can only assume is the original leader token was on the stay, stay square. Here are the other tokens. Pick whichever one you'd like. There's a Korean flag on a pole, a, bun a bowl of kimchi, another leader figure, a nuclear warhead, and what appears to be a blob of the muzzle. Guess that token slipped past quality control. I guess I'll take the bowl of kimchi. Great, I'll take the unified thought bubble of the workers' party. And that blob is actually supposed to look like that? Please can't refrain from assaulting a token of the workers' party. Sorry, my bad. We got to see what's first, and Unji gets the honors. She does so and moves her token. Ara, Uruguay. Okay, everyone chip in your share so we can secure the embassy space. And again, we all have to pay? We explained this earlier, the money is communal from the leader. We have to pull in equally to get what we want in all the countries. That means at the end of the game, we'd all have the same amount of money. Of course we will. Don't be silly. You're all equals in the eyes of the leader. Now fork over some cash, Yankee Doodle. But you mind not calling me that? You're American, right? Yankee Doodle Dandy? I don't think they even sing that in elementary school anymore. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Anyway, it's my turn, and I stop at Rhodesia. Everyone kick in. Do you this game not know that Rhodesia isn't a country anymore? What is this game anyways? Minor detail besides, there aren't many other nations nearby worth annexing. Your turn, by the way. Okay, I'm rolling... Common Worker's Chest. Oh, you get to pick a card from the red pile. Okay, then the card reads, the leader needs everyone in Sweden. Move all tokens to Sweden and pay double for anything purchased as compensation for leader's visits with the Swedish bikini team. I don't think there really ever was a Swedish bikini team, it was just a beer commercial gag. I've heard rumors as well. 
As if women would objectify themselves in small amounts of clothing for the pleasure of men. You want to talk? Those skirts don't leave much to imagination. Pastor Fast on a lance corporal trying to avoid duty. Stop looking! Purple suits you really well, Unji. But not purple, they're lavender. Why am I explaining this? <laughs> Good question, it's your turn. Terrible. We continue on playing like this for hours. Trinity card. Good luck to the Yodak for getting intoxicated and failing to secure an embassy in Greenland. Again, I swear they put 10 of those cards in the set. And hours. How could you fail that role to take over Norway, Sweden, Finland block? These pesky fans, it's their fault with their spooky phones and Santa Claus backing. <laughs> and hours. Jean, Jean, wake up. No need to shout in my ear, sister. After what seems like an eternity, we finally decide to finish up. Oh god, can we please stop? It's 1 a.m. We still don't have enough to buy embassies in Mexico, Canada, USA block. The leader in this game sure doesn't mind taking back his seed money for his own purposes. That pay for the leader's memoirs card is brutal. I think we can stop now. Besides, it looks like Unji is out cold. Aww. Better not you're awake, but no avail. She's down for the count. Think you can carry her to the bed? I'll put the game away. Sure thing. Good night, Jean. Pleasant dreams. I nailed down and gently get my arms under Unji, lifting her off the floor. It's pretty light. Well, it's not exactly like she's carrying around much. Walk into the room and put her on the bed and pull the blankets over her. She mumbles something in her sleep. Hmm. Death. America. Pig. Dog. Loves you North Koreans, too. Ah, one Korea. Idiot. Can't but smile as I head back to my room to lay down for the night. Maybe we can do something other than attempt such a huge on foreign governments if I have a bad knockoff of a board game tomorrow. And, yep, new day. Yep, new day, so... We will call this a day. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to do my YouTube line, but I'm banned from fucking live streaming on YouTube, so now I'm on Twitch. So, thank you for watching. Um, like, subscribe, comment down below. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing on Twitch. I don't know much about Twitch. I'll have to learn over the next 90 days as I'm banned from freaking... Gah. Anyways, yes. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.